Hello, it's Jimmy, and today I have with me my lovely partner Charlotte. Hello. And we're going to talk about our three favourite books that we read in 2018 and our one least favourite or mm -hmm. most disappointing book that we read in 2018. Mm -hmm. So, before we get started, do you have any special mentions that you'd like to say that aren't in your top list? Yes, I have a couple. A couple that I've not finished yet, and one that just didn't quite make the cut. So the first one, I'm not sure it's a book that's been released this year, but it's called Strange Heart Beating by Ellie Goldstone, and I loved it. I thought it was a really interesting and unusual book, and I think it's her first ever book, but... I don't know, I just really, I really liked it, I was really engrossed. Um, it's an interesting take on the Leda and the Swan myth, so if, you, if you're sort of into classical retellings, you'll probably enjoy it. I also have been loving Flames by Robbie Arnott. It's really, really moving and, again, very, very unusual. And that was the one that you heard of, because Simon Savage yes, was loving yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and... I just haven't had a chance to finish it yet, so I, th I imagine it would have been in my top three, but I'm not going to pop it in because I'm yet to finish it. It might be in your It might be an absolutely awful ending, so... <laughs> okay, and I've got one special mention, which nearly... I couldn't decide between two books for mm -hmm. my third favourite, and the one that I just chose against mm. is The Undoing Project by Michael Lewis. Okay. So I've talked about that in another video. It's got a personal story, it's got some history in it, it's got some behavioural psychology in it. I feel like you learn a lot, I cried at the end, it's entertaining, it's a really good book, but didn't quite make its way into my top three, but that's my special mention. Okay. So we're going to go from our third favourite, then our second favourite, then our least favourite, and then finally our most favourite favourite. So do you want to go first? What's yeah, third so favorite? my third favourite book this year is The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. And I'm not sure it came out this year. I think it came out this year on paperback. It is a really, really short novel. It's an apocalyptic novel so the base the, the basic plot is we're following a woman who is traveling across the country to escape a huge flood that has engulfed london i suppose the main plot driver is that she is expecting a child so it's quite an unusual um apocalyptic novel she's very involved in herself obviously at that point because she's expecting a child and she's going through all all of the the seemingly quite mundane worries of an expectant mother um, while this huge catastrophe is happening around her. So it's written in really short chapters. It's very, very poetic. I think if you are a big poetry fan, um, it will really appeal to you. But it's just a really unusual dystopian apocalyptic novel. It's really human and very compelling and I read it when I was on holiday as well in Ireland and I think for some reason I think you always enjoy books more when you're on holiday because you're more focused on them and you can just immerse yourself completely in the story so The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. So is that based on the biblical great flood at all? It is, or? it does have some very biblical elements. It also reminded me a bit of Children of Men by P.D. James because this idea of this this almost miracle child mm -hmm. that is carrying this woman through um, what is very, very traumatic. It's a, a beacon of hope, I suppose. So yeah, it does feel very biblical, but also takes elements from lots of other well-known dystopian novels. Yeah. Great. So my third favourite, which pipped uh, The Undoing Project, is Eat Up by Ruby Tando. So I've talked about this in another video. It's many things. It's a manifesto. It's a memoir. It's an antidote against a lot of the food nonsense. And now's a good time to read it because of all of the January, New Year, New You type promotions. It will help you keep a sense of realism, which will help defend you against all of those messages. 
I found it really touching. I feel like I learned a lot. There's interesting nuggets in there about the history of chocolate and things like that. For such a, a small book, it contains a lot of wisdom and information. I listened to an audio book. It's read by the author and I'd recommend listening to it that way. Mm. She's a good reader. Um, but the physical copy is good as well because it has a number of recipes in it and it's easier to cook from those recipes if you've got the physical copy. Although it is nice listening to her read the recipes, it's harder to cook from that. Mm. So that's my number three, Eat Up by Ruby Tendo. And yeah, I would agree that it's very poignant at the moment, especially around New Year where you're just bombarded with things telling me telling you you're too fat and you should be losing weight so I do I think it's a good read for this time of year yeah um, my second favorite book this year is a children's book and it's called Julian is a Mermaid by Jessica Love I'm a primary school teacher so I read far more children's books than I do grown-up books and I picked this book because I just think it's a really really wonderful story it's very simple but it has a really, really powerful message um, that can be interpreted in many, many ways. And I think it's really, really important that we are giving our children the opportunity to read such rich and representative literature. I think the illustrations are beautiful, especially as we see Julian kind of transform into a mermaid. He basically goes to a carnival with his nan, I think it is, and he sees some people dressed up in these fantastic costumes and he desperately wants to emulate this. He really loves the bright colours and he loves the beautiful dresses and he wants to be a mermaid basically. And his, his nan kind of supports this, this dream and helps him create this outfit. So it's really simple actually, but it's a, it's a story of acceptance. It's a story of gender non-conformity. It's really, fantastic because there are lots of representations of people of colour in the book which is I think something that we should be really really aware of when we are buying books for children or reading books to children that there are people of colour in the stories because it's just again trying to be conscious of making our stories as representative as possible. It's also just a celebration of bodies and different types of bodies. I think we had a conversation about how it's one of the only stories that I have read, one of the only picture books that I have read that doesn't ridicule fat bodies. In fact, it presents fat bodies as beautiful and something to be celebrated and something to be admired. And it's just not something that you see that often. So that's why I really liked it. I think it was a really powerful book. So that was Julian is a Mermaid by Jessica Love. I... Number two book is going to be Red Famine by Anne Applebaum. This is a book about the famine in Ukraine in the 1930s, mainly in 1933. It has a lot of background context to that as well, going from around the time of the Russian Revolution in 1917. So the first half of the book roughly is about what was going on in Ukraine during that period with different national movements which were gaining strength for the first time in Ukraine's history uh, when it had previously been seen as just a kind of a small unimportant region of Russia and it had been part of the Russian Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire but it had its own language, its own culture and people were starting to be enthusiastic about pushing that for the first time and then with Stalin coming in and the way he reacted to sort of Ukrainian national movement, it's a really interesting book. There's a lot in there. It's really devastating and heartbreaking in parts. One of the chapters in particular was one of the most difficult chapters I've read of any book to read um, because of how horrendous it was. It draws on a huge number of oral recollections of different people who lived through it as well as documents like letters from Stalin to other officials so it gives you a really rich picture of what was going on while still being quite a personal one so that was a really good book and I definitely recommend it to anyone with an interest in history and 
the horrors that people can do to each other and Ukraine and the first half of the 20th century. So that's my number two favourite, Red Famine by Anne Applebaum. So what was your least favourite or most disappointing book of that you read in 2018? I think, yeah, I wouldn't say that this book is my least favourite, but it is definitely my most disappointing book. And it might be slightly controversial. I mean, not in any way controversial because it's, you know, whatever. But it's um, Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And I know this is, this story was massively popular. <laughs> it was hugely, hugely popular across lots of booktubers. Well, with lots of booktubers that I've watched and lots of blogs that I read and lots of literary critics. And oh, I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. I can't quite put my finger on why I don't like it. I read it really quickly. I read it in about two days. So it is quite an easy read and it is a compelling read. So I'll give it that definitely. I just found the characters to be completely self-absorbed. I found what was happening in the story was actually not of any great consequence. It didn't really make me think about my own relationships or the way I behave myself. A lot of the praise that I've seen directed at the book is kind of based around that, the idea that you can recognise yourself in these, con in these conversations, conversations with friends and these own sort of really overanalyzing passages of dialogue. But I just didn't like it. I found it, I found the characters to be really pretentious. I didn't relate to them at all. It's one of those books that you could take with a pinch of salt. Interesting, I think Jen Campbell did just that and she enjoyed the fact that the characters were very self-absorbed and she thought it was a very conscious decision on the author's part and maybe it was conscious i'm sure you know sally rooney intended it to be that way but i think you either like it or you don't and interestingly as well even though it has such amazing you know fantastic critical praise um and she's now a sort of darling of literary circles i think um, I don't know anyone personally who read it and enjoyed it, so all of my friends didn't like it and quite a few of them have read them. So it's interesting to not know anyone personally who doesn't like, who does, who does like it. I haven't read Normal People, I've heard it's a lot better. I will read Normal People. I'm not giving up on Sally Rooney. I just didn't particularly enjoy conversations with friends and maybe it's just not for me really, but there you go. I haven't read any of the Sally Rooney's and um, I sort of feel like I should give it a try because it's so of the moment, mm. um, but your review doesn't make me desperate to pick it up. Yeah, I just, things. yeah, I just found it exasperating basically. Yeah. <laughs> Who has an affair over email <laughs> was, is, would, would be my main, I mean that's a bit spoilery, but that would be my main criticism. So my least favourite or most disappointing book, which I didn't hate, I didn't hate any books I read this year, but I think this is the one that I finished, but while I was reading it, I felt the most that it was not very well written and it was a bit uh, predictable and a bit over the top, and that was The Temp. It's a thriller, crimey novel, I read Snap by Belinda Bauer, which was the first crime novel long-listed for the Booker Prize, which happened in 2018. And I quite enjoyed that. I found it was an easy read. I blazed through it. It was entertaining. Not the sort of thing I normally read, but I did enjoy it. So I picked up The Temp, which was one we sell in the shop where I work, on the same table as Snap. So I thought maybe it'll be similar. And it made me appreciate why Snap was received so well. If the temp is typical of that kind of contemporary thriller, then Snap was written really well in comparison. Although the temp was written, there were some things in it that were interesting. It was written by someone who worked as a TV writer and producer for many years, and the characters all work in TV writing and producing. So I'm sure there's some interesting things about probably quite realistic in the setting and there were some entertaining bits I did read through it quite quickly it got quite exciting at the end in the last sort of 20 to 30 percent of the book 
which was a little bit disappointing that the first 70 to 80 percent of the book felt so slow and mm -hmm. unthrilling for a book <laughs> that I picked up because it was supposed to be a thriller yeah. uh, there was some really over-the-top melodramatic twists some of them were a little bit predictable which Charlotte even predicted one of the major ones in the middle even though she hadn't read it just from me talking about it the one at the end which I won't spoil was so just eye-rollingly <laughs> melodramatic I described it to someone at work and they said it sounds like watching Hollyoaks, which is a really <laughs> ridiculous sort of family drama based soap opera with some really over the top moments. So that's quite accurate. So if you really like Hollyoaks and that sort of thing, you probably would like The Tenth. I'm not into it really. So I enjoyed parts of it, but overall, probably my least favourite book I read this year. If I would to recommend knowing the plot of the term BBC drama called The Replacement, which basically has a very similar idea, but it was really, really good. Yeah. A good, a good BBC gripping Sunday night drama for you, if you... So that maybe shows that the concept is not a bad one. Yeah, yeah. But the execution is what let it down in this case. I think case. It, play, it plays on a primal fear, doesn't it? Of being yeah. of someone coming into your life and covertly yeah so on the cover usurping you on the cover it has the tagline she's got your job now she wants your life which was quite compelling mm. in a way that's what made me pick it up and it's quite interesting i wouldn't say that is a good blurb for the book it's kind of a good hook and then when you once you've read it you sort of think well mm. it makes you think about the ways in which it's an accurate tagline for the book but it didn't live up to what that made me expect from it. Mm. So maybe that's part of why I was disappointed by it, because I had mm. an unrealistic idea going in, which isn't necessarily the fault of the author, because it's probably the publishers, people at the publisher who choose the tagline on the front cover. Yeah. So I'm, maybe I'm trying to hedge my disappointment in the book. But I did have a laugh. It, yeah. I think it was probably the worst book I read this year, but I did have a laugh with it. Yeah, so you finished it, didn't you? I did finish awful? it. Yeah. No, there's other books that I didn't really enjoy that I haven't continued with. Um, but that one, I enjoyed it enough to finish it. Okay. So, now it's a big moment. <laughs> Your favourite, number one favourite book. Okay, I've got my... Drum roll, please. I've got my number one favourite book here with me. Ah. Um, and it is Sabrina by Nick Dronasso. I, I think that's how you pronounce the surname, I'm not sure. Nick Dronasso. Um, this is a graphic... I'm going to put it down now. It's a graphic novel. And it is the story of a woman who goes missing. And... That woman is Sabrina, the Sabrina of the title. However... It's not the Teenage Witch. Not the Teenage Witch, no. Difference However, me. it's sort of quite hard to explain without being too spoilerific. But the novel isn't necessarily about Sabrina. Um, her going missing is the kind of the key event in the story. But from, it's more about what unfolds after that. Um... First of all, I just think it's a really, really beautifully drawn novel. Um, it's unlike any other graphic novel I've ever read. I'm, I used to be quite big into comics, but this, the drawing style of this is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's very simple. Oh, I'm not quite sure how to describe it. Just very plain, for want of a better way to say it. But not in a bad way. But not in a bad way. It's just really really powerful um and i think sometimes the characters can literally look like blobs that's the only way that i can describe them really but they're so emotive and evocative they're the expression despite the fact they're so um seemingly simply drawn you can really tell what a character is feeling in the drawing i like the color palette i like the um the layout of the page it's really really just very evocative and emotional. Um, the story itself is 
again, it's hard without spoilers because I really don't want to spoil this book because it's so to read it for the first time is so amazing. Um, it deals with issues of American identity. It deals with issues around growing paranoia, especially in America, regarding the government and the police. And channels a really human fear of what is happening around you not quite adding up with the experience that you're having personally and other people perceiving what is happening. I don't know, you having that moment of cognitive dissonance, you don't quite get what's going on in your own life and everyone's telling you something else is happening. If you are a fan of sort of conspiracy theories and those sorts of things, I mean, I'm not personally a conspiracy theorist, but I find the psychology behind it really, really fascinating. This is definitely the book for you. Um, also, there were sort of elements of Alex Jones in this book. I can't re that I just thought about him all the time. I mean, I'm not an Alex Jones fan, but there are bits in this story where you where there one of the characters is listening to obviously a far right radio station, and it's just the most accurate portrayal of that sort of genre I've ever seen in any literature. It just feels so real, like nothing in this book is beyond plausibility. So that's why I loved it. But I'll show you some of the pictures because they're just so, just so beautiful. Like, like you can see, really muted color palette, very simple drawing, but <laughs> not close enough. But it's just a really wonderful story. It's disturbing, it's compelling, it's sad but there are some positive things you can take from it as well. And it was the first graphic novel ever oh, yeah. long-listed for of the course. book prize. Of course. So working in a bookshop, I see everything through the lens of whether it was nominated for the book prize. Yeah, yeah, obviously. It was a quick read. Did you, did you read it in one day? I read it in one day, yeah. Yeah. And do you think that enhanced the experience, the fact that you can speed through it? Or was it because it's such a compelling um, book? I think it just depends how you read graphic novels as well. I think you can spend a long time looking at all of the panels and see what's going on in all of the panels, or you can just read the dialogue um, and kind of just soak up the artwork as you go along. Like a piece of bread and gravy. Yeah, exactly. I will, ret I will return to it, I think. I will read it again. Um, Do you think it would have worked as well if it were not a graphic novel, if it were just a novel? Or do you think it's really suited to the medium? Mm, I think it would be a real shame if it wasn't a graphic novel, mainly because the art is so intrinsic in what makes it such a compelling book. I think something would be lost, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I highly recommend Sabrina by Nick Jonasso. <laughs> What's your favourite, most favourite book? My most favourite book that I read in 2018, and also came out in English in 2018, was... <laughs> Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Surprise, surprise. Which I talked about in another video. I talked about how much I loved it. I really, really liked it. Thanks again to Bethany Water and Alice, who host the What Page You On podcast because I wouldn't have read it if I hadn't heard them talking about it. And I really loved it. It's probably my favourite novel that I've read for a few years. One of my top novels I've ever read in terms of how much I enjoyed it. I do think that different people would get different things out of it. It's for such a small novel, there's a few different threads that I think it could pull your mind along. Mm -hmm. And I think when you read it, your mind got pulled along different threads yeah. than mine did. So a lot of the quotes on the quotes on the cover, I didn't really agree with, but maybe you would agree with. And I think that is something that means that not everyone is going to love it as much as I did. And that's fine. I th it was short, but I think it was the perfect length. I feel like I could reread it again and again, which is not something I often feel about with a book. Part of why I loved it was it reminded me of my own daily life working in a shop. It also reminded me of, of sitcoms, workplace sitcoms, mm -hmm. like The Office, which I also really like. just feel like it built up an atmosphere 
and the mindset of the main character in a really visceral way that pulled you in and I quite enjoyed the ride. So I definitely recommend it. I got a copy from my mum. So mum, if you're watching, I hope you've read it because I think you'll like it. And I got Charlotte to read it and I've recommended it to customers. And I think it's one of the books that's gonna stay with me for a long time. So that was my number one book that I read mm. in 2018. And I'll be surprised if I enjoy anything in 2019 more. Oh, that's a big, it's big, a, um, yeah. It's got big shoes to fill. It's a high bar, but if something does impress me more, then I can't wait to read it because it must be really, really good. Mm. So that's my number one pick, Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. And she's written a load of other books. I think it's her eighth or ninth or something like that. Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, so, and, uh, my, and as I mentioned in my other video, she herself works to this day and has done throughout her whole adult life in a convenience store. So mm. part of it is based on that experience. And I think that's something really interesting. I'd like to find out more about her life, really. I'm sort of scared of reading her other books because I'm sure they won't live up to how much I enjoyed this one just because mm. it's such a high bar. But I might check some of them out because I did enjoy it so much. So mm. we'll see. Maybe I'll be talking about how much I loved or was disappointed by Sayaka Murata's other books in 2019 in some later videos. Mm. And she and the translator of Convenience Store Woman are going to be doing some events in the UK this wow. year. Um, together, which I think is a really interesting thing to do. I've not been to an event which has both the author and the English translator of a book yeah, before. Yeah, that sounds like it would be cool. Yeah, so I'm really going to try and make it to one of those because um, I would love to shake the hand of the author and yeah. meet the translator as well because it's the book I read, the translated version, is a combined work of art. Definitely. So I think that will be really cool. So something to look forward to in 2019. Do you have anything more to say about your favourite and least favourite books of 2018? Um, not really. And it's just not. It's not been a massively eventful reading year for me. But I'm excited for new stuff coming out and hopefully finish off some some bits and pieces. Are there any finished. Are there any new releases that you're looking forward to in particular? Um, I'm looking forward to The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil, I think that's her name. Um, it's getting quite a lot of hype on blogs and bits and pieces, but um, it sounds right up my street, really. And yeah, I would like quite like to read Normal People by Sally Rooney, just so I can be as antagonistic as possible. <laughs> Um, and well, you um, might be pleasantly surprised. I know. I hope I am, and I can't wait to finish reading Flames by Robbie Arnott as well. But I also sort of want it to go on forever because it's so amazing. But yeah, that, those are my excitements and hopes for 2019. I've done a vid on my 2019 releases that I'm looking forward to. So there, some of them are coming out this month. Yeah. So look out for my discussion of those. Check out that video if you haven't watched it yet, Mum, and anyone else who might <laughs> happen to watch this video. Um, we're also going to be starting doing a podcast together, which is completely um, book related. Um, and it is going to be about one of my favourite things ever, which are horror films, which also happen to be one of Jimmy's least favourite things ever. And I think it's a bit of a a possible bone of contention in our relationship that I love them so much and you can't I'm stand them. them. I can't get enough. I can't get enough. So what we're going to do is watch some horror films together and talk about them as a horror fanatic and a horror phobic. And what's it going to be called? It's going to be called Don't Worry, I'll Hold Your Hand. Oh. But I think it sounds significantly more romantic than it will end up being so the first episode of that should be up soon if not already up by the time this video comes out so i'll put a link in the description and go and check it out our new podcast so if you want to get in touch with me to discuss anything in this video or anything else you can leave a comment 
down below. You can get me on Twitter at gime, J-I-I-M underscore E. Or I've just made a new bookstagram account on Instagram. It's Jimmy Can Read with underscore. So Jimmy underscore can underscore read. And do you want to mention any ways people can get in touch with you? Or sh should they just get in touch with me and I can pass yeah, on the message? Yeah, you can pass on my fan mail. So leave any fan mail for Charlotte in my inbox and I will pass it on. Yeah. Bye. Thank Bye. you for having me. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for being on. <laughs>